Right now it is time for a, a look at the Lakeville Journal. This week in the Lakeville Journal and in our center studio, actually our ND, our NASCAR Dave studio, is Cynthia Hosswinter. Cynthia, good morning. Good morning. And uh, live on the telephone, Janet Manko. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. So how are both of you? You survived Thanksgiving and everything? Yeah, didn't put on 34 pounds, I'm happy to say. That's good. Yeah. That's great. We missed you all for a week, but I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I love I, I love Thanksgiving. I, I, I love cooking the turkey, yeah. uh, but then after that, uh, it's just it, it's just dressing for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I love dressing. I'm a weird guy, but that's I love the, the way stuffing. It is. That's that's uh, it's all about <laughs> yeah. the stuffing for me. Really, it really is. All right, let us go uh, to the uh, front page of the Lakeville Journal, and uh, there's a uh, there's a couple of things that uh, that, that are that are, that are big here, and that is. Uh, the update on Sharon Hospital once again uh, at Sharon Town Hall coming up on what, November 30th? December 3rd. Oh, yeah, um, yeah December which is, 3rd, yeah. Which is Monday, and it's Monday morning, so of course we're on deadline, so Janet and I would like to be there, but we are putting out the paper. Um, Patrick Sullivan will be there. And this is actually a news release, which we never put on the front page, but um, it's so important that we felt it was deserving of uh, not only front page, but also um, great placement up there. So we hope people will go and ask questions and you know, we still don't really, somebody said to me, is the maternity ward, what's the going on with the maternity ward? And I said, you know, I don't know. I mean, I know it's closing, but I, I haven't heard an update on that. But I think it's important for us to keep our eyes on what's happening here. And then Maria Horn had sent out an email blast saying on December 4th, and, and Brian Oler had actually said this as well, is yep. that everybody really needs to be watching HealthQuest's efforts with the state to... The, merge the, with Western the, Connecticut. There's a public hearing coming up for that where people can speak on it. That's exactly right. right. And that people, if they're upset about what's happening here in Sharon, that that's a really good moment for them to say to the state, by the way, they made these promises in their last CON that were not fulfilled in our opinion. Well, I've got to call out to Brian Older to come in and talk about that. And uh, I haven't heard back from Brian yet, but I'm, I know I will. And uh, Marie Horn is going to come in and talk about that meeting because it's an important meeting. Yes. If whether you, whether you don't understand and want to support the hospital or whether you don't understand and you want to know why this is happening, uh, this is a chance for you to get these questions out to the people that are going to make the decision on it. Right. And I think that, to a large degree, the Department of Public Health kind of does respond to what people say to them, that there's a lot that they're working on and that it's easy for them to be like, oh, this is an easy one. We're not going to pay that much attention. So I think it's really good for them to sort of see that everybody here is paying attention. And Maria is organizing rides, and we have an email address for her if you'd like to get in on that. All right. Uh, uh, also, right below that, speaking about health care, is a new medical center is planned for Winstead. Yeah, there's been a lot of activity on this front in the last month. These are plans that have been going on for years, it sounds like. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a relatively new person to covering Winstead. And, and Janet, feel free to jump in if you'd like. But so there would... Um, Charlotte Hungerford has gotten approval from the Planning and Zoning Commission to do a 30,000-square-foot medical center in Winstead. And, of course, now I think, you know, based on HealthQuest and Sharon, I think that everybody is very aware that, you know, it's important to have some uh, some good medical care here, some important um, emergency medical care especially. And I think that now they have to get approval from the state um, and get approval for their helipad for a Lifestar. All right. Uh, on the other side of the page... I, I, we got a donkey. I know. Deb Alexander is so funny, and that was her headline, Braze of Sunshine. And um, and she, she had found out that they have these donkeys over at Trinity in West Cornwall, which is a very interesting place. And if you haven't had a chance to go over there, you should definitely go over there. They do a lot of um, community events. And actually, a friend of mine said she's going over there for a Christmas season retreat, which involves spending time with the donkeys and making cookies and some other things. So um, sure, certainly look into that. But they have chickens there. They've got a working farm. And Joseph Rose, who is um, the head of the center, very interesting guy, was trying to figure out how they can protect the chickens and discovered that donkeys are actually great um, predator fighters for, for chickens. And so it's a great thing for them because, of course, we associate Jesus and um, the uh, Jerusalem, the, the birth in Jerusalem with donkeys. All right. A picture of Mr. and Mrs. Claus at Noble Horizons. I think that's Mrs. Claus and an elf, and it was taken by Megan Conklin from Salisbury Central School, but we also have some coverage by Deb Alexinas on the inside, and the Festival of Trees, always big fun, um, is going on until December 1st. On the night of December 1st is the gala auction, where people will get a chance to choose their tree and take it home, and um, really has become a nice activity for the kids with uh, Nina Mathis portraying in a very lively way Mrs. Claus. And sad news really out of Salisbury, but we knew it was coming, we're... 
Now, the pastor is going to go after eight years. Uh, yeah, Diane Montecatini, uh-huh. who everybody loves. She's been a wonderful, nice, stable, solid, very um, active in the community presence. And her husband, Joe Catania, um, you know, we hate to see people leaving Sharon Hospital, but um, at this time, when, when all my doctors are retiring, Dr. Catania is also leaving, and they're moving to Vermont. And she says eight years, it's like a good uh, like a good term in political office. Eight years is a good, is a good run. Well, I always remember Val Bernardoni uh, when he retired. <laughs> On the sixth year uh, of uh, being uh, superintendent, superintendent yeah. uh, I, I, he was quoted as saying the following: "Being a, a superintendent is kind of like being an umpire in baseball. Uh, the first, the first two or three years, you know, everybody tends to agree with you. Uh, the next two years, uh, the tide starts to shift where people have had enough of you, and then the last two years." Really, you have a, you're in a no-win situation. Val Bernardoni was such a master, and I was lucky enough to cover him, not when he was superintendent, but when he was first selectman in Salisbury. Yeah. That was a guy who really knew how to get stuff done. Yeah, um, yeah, but great guy. But yeah. but she's right. You know, an eight-year run is, is just enough. It's, 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 especially in, in, in today's up-and-down world. Yeah. Uh, now, this is a story that just amazes me. Uh, and that is uh, the length of it that's going on. The ZBA has extended the hearing on Metcalf paving. So, um, of course, anybody who's had to have their driveway paved um, knows Metcalf. And if you've driven up to uh, Great Barrington recently, you've probably seen their big billboard there. And um, I would say people generally like Ben Metcalf. But um, the people of East Canaan, which is kind of an area with a lot of farms and quarries are dead set against letting him expand his operation up there. And this has been a very, and and, P, and as we know, people in East Canada really know how to mobilize as they did when there was a concrete plant being proposed for across the border in Massachusetts, which um, I believe was defeated. So there's sort of, I'm getting, I'm on an email chain, very, very actively and adamantly opposed to the expansion of his operation there. And, um, this has turned into a really uh, big legal fight, and the details of it are, you know, questions about the planning and zoning and the zoning enforcement officer. But what it really boils down to is they do not want this plant, and they're going to they're going to do everything they can to make sure it's not brought to town. All right. Uh, now, uh, when you folks, when you go into the paper, first of all, don't forget the double fatal car crash. Oh, that's it. That happened on Monday night, right? Yeah, it happened at, at midnight, and that was a. It was very icy out there, and there were five kids out driving around. 19-year-old at the wheel juvenile in the car, and two, the, both the driver and the front seat passenger died. And um, the three passengers in the back were all injured. So again, a good reminder um, why we need medical care in Winstead nearby. But also, there was a big crash last night um, as I was driving through Millerton. So um, do keep an eye out. It's that black ice time. And there was the another year. crash in Norfolk uh, late on, t- on Tuesday right. night that claimed the life of a woman. In right. Norfolk and another one in Goshen. It's just been an awful start to this season, and uh, we all have to take a look at our tires and slow down. Right. That's what happens when you get 15 inches of snow uh, in, 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 in November where people yeah. just aren't yeah, ready. We're just yeah, not people ready. don't have their snows on yet. But also, you know, people always ask why we run the police blotter, and to a large degree what we're doing is we're trying to remind you that people – get very cavalier about the roads around here and often drive much faster than they ought to. You forget that it's black ice, that it's almost more dangerous when you can't see the snow and ice on the road, um, and that there's a lot of um, animals jumping in and out from the sides of the roads. So really, no matter how good a driver you are, no matter how good your car is, do do go slowly and no texting. Okay, what I want to remind people, when you open up the page, and don't bypass A2 because there's a ton of different things that are going on in our area that are featured under the police blotter on page A2. I mean, just yes. uh, there's just a lot of things that go on. And I want to throw in a plug for another story in A1, which is Chock-A-Block Fall, which is um, before the Thanksgiving holiday. Like, I'm one of those people that as soon as the turkey's wrapped up, I'm watching Christmas movies and playing Christmas music. So we interviewed about 30 people on their favorite Christmas films, and I was really surprised by the films that people listed. What, 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 what were listed? Um, Die Hard. Who knew Die Hard is... Well, they have that with the original ones during Christmas. You're right. Yeah, and I that had never in a million years <laughs> occurred to me. But there's a, there's a lot of other good ones in there that are surprising. Um, so it's definitely a worth a look worth a story worth looking at. Uh, did uh, did uh, uh, there's a new movie on, on Netflix that's out called Christmas Chronicles that is going to make that list. It's huh? absolutely it's absolutely fantastic. Good to know. All right. Uh, all right. How about uh, we go on to page A3? A lot of, now, there's lots of colors on these pages from the, from now on. Yes. You've got the Festival of Trees. Uh, you have the, the in Kent. Uh, and then you have the, even in color, uh, you covered one of the uh, floats in, the, in the, Canaan. The debut 
holiday event, which is the North Canaan Parade of Lights, which was on Sunday night. And I've gone to a lot of parades of lights, and I was so happy that this was one where it wasn't really, really freezing cold. It was just festively, <laughs> seasonally chilly. Um, there weren't that many um, fire companies there. Usually you have... Um, most of the towns will participate in each other's parades. I think there was Cornwall, Kent, and Norfolk, which made me wonder if there was some kind of an event going on um, that required the uh, the volunteers to be out. But so for the next few weeks, we have a special page that we're calling Holidays, and all the reporters have been out um, scurrying around like little elves and looking for places where you can um, do your holiday shopping, and it's a nice chance for us to sort of revisit some of our local businesses and let them know that we care for them. And so we have um, Deb Alexinas going, who went to um, Festival of... of trees at Noble Horizons, which is always really fun. Um, and then we had Shaw went over to Berkshire Country Store, which used to be here in Cornwall. was a very popular little store. There were some issues with um, the rental of the space, yeah. so he moved to Norfolk. And as far as I can tell, he's done a great job there. So, you know, whenever I'm looking for presents for people who, because I'm often looking for people who live outside of the area, I try to find something that's local. And there is a lot of really interesting good stuff that's local from around here. And Berkshire Country Store has a lot of it. And if you want to know specifics, read Shaw's article. And uh, Lance Christensen went to the Champagne Stroll in Kent, which is always a really nice event. And, of course, um, the weather was quite chilly on the first day of it, but um, we've had worse, I I'd like to say. Um, and he got a, an adorable photo of a girl with a dog. Everybody in Kent always brings their dogs with them when there's an activity out in the middle of town. But um, lots of um, nice photos from that. Their tree lighting is coming up and also their parade of lights and their annual gingerbread festival, which is really, really fun, and I highly recommend people go. It's kind of a scavenger hunt. You get a list, and you're supposed to mark off on your list um, which ones you visited, and there's a drawing for a prize and a puzzle. you got lots of color on shopping and stuff like that on the next page, too. Yeah, B. Johnstone, has, um, speaking of Kent, has moved from Kent to Sharon, is over there in the shopping plaza, and really is full of unbelievable stuff. And Alexander Wilburn, who has a very discriminating eye, um, loves that store, and Sort of, you know, for me, $125 for a tie is a lot, but for an Hermes tie, not so much. And she has a really, uh, she's a great curator and she's a great stylist. So you can walk in there and you can kind of say, like, I, you know, I don't really know what to do with this. She'll, she'll style you up. Um, and she has lots of basics too, like she has basic leggings and, you know, simple sweaters and all sorts of stuff that Alex describes in his story. And then Sebastian Beckwith, who's friends with my friends, uh, uh, Dana Cowan and Barkley Palmer who live in Amenia so I've met him a couple times at, at meals there and he's fascinating and we of course think of the big dog in um, this area when it comes to tea as the Harneys who do such a beautiful job at their shop in Millerton in the factory but Sebastian's also got his own little business and just in time for the holidays um, a book called A Little Tea Book all right. Uh, and on the next page, once again, more color when you cover uh, a, a new book. And also, there's uh, Christine Baranski at the HB auction. She's my hero, and I love her. And, of course, Diane von Furstenberg had for many years led this wonderful annual auction um, to support the Housatonic Valley Association and protection of our river. And those guys do a ton over there, including mapping of open space and protection, protecting of land. Um, they're very, very busy over there. And... Um, they have this great auction, and Christine Baranski runs it now. And, of course, my favorite choice for a holiday film, as you will see if you read our Christmas film story, is The Ref, which stars Christine Baranski, who's great. And Nick Stoller, who used to work at um, NRS, and is saying something which really I don't think can be overemphasized enough, which is if you're a person who has no money, you need a financial advisor just as much as somebody who needs who has a lot of money. Um, and Nick's got a new book out and points out things that, you know, there are, there are nonprofits that will help you with basic financial planning, with helping to save for college, with, help, with helping to save for your future, and with understanding the market, which is very volatile right now, and helping you figure out what you can do to invest and protect yourself. So um, interesting article, again, by Deb Alexinas. All right. I, I want to go to the, uh, the, next, the next page. Uh, another brewery, uh, this time in Colebrook. Uh, we've got, of course, our brewery opening up in uh, in North Canaan, and this is in Colebrook. Right, and apparently the um, so somebody just contacted me and said the um, the brewery in Canaan is is des they're they're planning to open December fifteenth, so we'll see. And um, but I have somebody going over to interview them, and then these two guys are brothers in Colebrook, and I I don't know why I just assumed that they were young, but they're not. They're guys who've been around the block a couple times and have done a really good job with opening this brewery in uh, Colebrook on a large farm, and the beer not only did they 
get it up and running pretty fast, but the beer was so popular that they actually sold out. So they had to shut down and expand, and that's great news. So we have a lot of interesting brewery activity. There's the Kent Falls Brewery also, um, and then there's that guy in Sharon who's growing hops and is selling to some of the local brews. So it's a really great little cottage industry going on here. I got a picture of the annual Thanksgiving meal at the Pilgrim House in Canaan there, but also another Vedden uh, vid video I caught from Falls Village. Yes, the Vedden vids are great, <laughs> and if anybody hasn't watched them, you need to go get some. It's one of those things like the ski jump where you sort of say to people, you haven't seen that yet. So um, ski jump, always fun. Eric Vedden's video is fantastic. I'm not just saying that because the Lakeville Journal was, was uh, featured in a recent one. Eric's just a lovely guy and very quirky and brings a very interesting sensibility to these little small town movies. And if you have that sense that people often get at Christmas time of like, gosh, New England's so great, these uh, videos really are the essence of it. All right, uh, and in North Canaan, a food truck ordinance side. Yes, and you might be thinking like, huh, that's funny. You don't really think of there being a lot of food trucks in there. There was just Canaan. one that was there just at yeah, the end of was, last summer. There was that one that was there last summer um, at Jim's Garage. Um, and it was a guy that had been sort of recruited to come in and sell barbecue, and I think he did pretty well. Yeah. I think the food the food looked kind of interesting and good. So um, the guys from the Blackberry River Baking Company and the new Blackberry River Bistro, which has quietly opened up on Main Street in what used to be the, the office of Plant and Seeds and has a beautiful kitchen, they have a really interesting, nice little sort of Mexican-inspired um, menu, and they're serving Thursday through Sunday nights. And then, of course, Blackberry River Bakery is open, um, I think, five days a week. Uh, for breakfast and lunch, a very good bakery there too. So the owner of that place, it's very similar to the conversation about Airbnb, which where he's coming in and saying, you know, it's hard for us. We're we're struggling to make a business go here in in North Canaan. And when you let a, a food truck come in, and they don't have to um, follow all the ordinances that we do, it's it's unfair to us. So let's talk about that. So they're looking at an ordinance on that. All right, you've got also the uh, Norfolk uh, festivals covered and. Uh Salisbury Wooder Sports Association, it's madness time on Saturday between 8 and 12. That's a big sale. And if you want cross-country skis, I'm thinking about going because if, if ever there was a year when I'm thinking like, huh, I bet I could use some cross-country skis, this is going to be it. If, it. if it snows like it rained through the whole summer, we all are going to need cross-country skis. Um, the first of the annual uh, town meetings with the town reports, Cornwall, came out nice and early. Everybody sort of spreads them out between now and I think the end of January. And those town reports are really interesting to read. So if you live in a town, if you're new or if you're a longtime resident, you always learn something when you read the town report. A lot of people turned out for that um, sing-along in, in uh, Norfolk, maybe because it was indoors. But that was a, a pretty impressive turnout. And, of course, we'll have a lot of coverage of seasonal events next week. And um, as Janet will mention later, we have the... Uh, the guide to holiday activities that Janet painstakingly puts together, and it's extremely useful. Uh, nice uh, on your obituary page, uh, right up on uh, Steve Utterback. Uh, so, uh, you lo beloved local person. I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to jump over you, Janet. Did you want to say something? No, go ahead. Um, Steve Utterback, of course, is a person that you know because he, and as we learned from his obit, which is very long and, of course, written by the family, got got bit by the radio bug and apparently was just here all the time. I remember his he voice. Did, he did news and he had a music show, yeah. Yeah. Um, a <clears throat> nice guy and uh, died very suddenly and unexpectedly. And I think that um, based on something the family said, it's not really clear, actually, how he died. But um, if, he was just about to move to Indianapolis and... Uh, Big lover of cars, automobiles, food, and... And the nicest and, guy, and, and, absolutely. And, and life. And people, and life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a guy that, that everybody liked. And, of course, another sad one um, on, on the jump of the opus was David Pepe, yeah. who had um, pancreatic cancer. So. All right. Now, I want to I want to slide over because we only have about three and a half, four minutes left to, to go to the opinion page uh, after a close election time to serve. Right. This is referring to the 64th district and uh, the close race between Maria Horn and Brian Oler. Um, the fact that it had to go to a short recount, pull back, and then a full recount, uh, recanvas. Uh, it, it could have gone very differently if the candidates hadn't handled it as well as they did, and they both did, and uh, the winner, Maria Horn, will now need to serve, and Brian Oler will certainly find another way to serve his community, which he has done, you know, all his adult life, and um, we certainly were among the, as everyone knows, we were counting those votes as, uh, you know, election, the election was winding down and we sent information to the secretary of the state we will stay on top of that but 
and we have stayed on top of that, but um, really admire the way these candidates handled it. Uh, and a letter on the, on the, on the recount by uh, Charlie Vale is there, uh, and uh, a few other letters as well. That's right. Even after, the, even post-election, we have some letters, and uh, we continue to. So we welcome your thoughts. Uh, there's always something going on. Some good columns too. Don't miss them. Don't miss Snyder's cartoon either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Ever. <laughs> it's very, very it, it it's the mark. All right. Now we only have uh, about two and a half minutes left, and we've got health and a, and a very, very full compass. So very quickly, um, pecans, or do you say pecans, <laughs> as we say, um, featured on our health page and a column by uh, Carolyn McDonough, country cook. Compass is chock a block, as you said, and is full tabloid. Um, Peter Wojtuk is back in the area, which is a huge big deal. World famous sculptor, did the bulls at Hotchkiss, but has done much, much more. Has an open studio coming up. Find out more about that. Show at Hotchkiss of work by seven women photographers. And Day, who is a woman photographer, said it's really one of the best shows she's seen. She highly recommends it. Jeffrey Newman's got a show um, coming up at the Berkshire School. Um, similar to like Neil, if you're familiar with Neil Gaiman and his book, um, American Gods, and the TV series made out of it, similar, sort of looking at these iconic, kitschy uh, places and, and doing these beautiful photos of them. Patrick Sullivan, a laugh out loud, hilarious story about bad TV. Um, very interesting, uh, me- a thoughtful story by Alexander Wilburn about Boy Erased, about conversion therapy for young gay men. Really, really beautifully written article, very thoughtful. Um, the Tri State Chamber of Commerce. Um, it was a regional hometown holidays Jan- Janet has put together. Very extensive. Every tree lighting, all the activities coming up, advertising from lots of our local um, businesses, people to think about uh, at the holiday season. Calendar, and of course, coming up on Sunday, 1 p.m., the Jigsaw Puzzle Swap at the Lakeville Journal office. If you like Jigsaw Puzzles, do come. Yeah, a great way to start the holiday season. You'll know just what to get for that person on your list who is hardest to shop for. <laughs> Well, what's great about this is that you've got the Tri-State Chamber of Commerce, which really culminates with with their stuff uh, this weekend on the first, and the, and now the town of Amenia has to, has a big a big event like this on the first, which includes all of us there, uh, and it's this is where you see the communities come alive. It's really and, true. There's so much. It's the entire tri-state area. There's so much going on, and now is the time to take advantage of it. And to be aware, even if you're driving through a place, of when their uh, events are happening. So um, it really is you ama- know to appreciate it, it and it, not complain about it's it. It's really, <laughs> it's really amazing the way the volunteers at all these oh, churches yeah. and nonprofit organizations get together. And literally, in this small little area, you, there's probably, over the course of the next two weekends, 50 different locations you can go to find things that are all local, that are all non-local. And then I don't want to forget about the Salisbury Artisans, what they're going to do on yeah. their second weekend at the White Hart, where they donate their proceeds to area charities. Right. It, it's, uh, it's, it's just the, the, the region shines this time of year. <laughs> the region shines. And, yeah, I'll put in the plug for the Tri-State Chambers yep. Hometown Holidays event at the White Hart on the Green yep. in Salisbury, 430 to 6. Um, you can, uh, that's the same place where you'll find those artisans, and it's just a great time to do all kinds of things. All right. Well, we are out of time, speaking about time. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it's going to be for the next month. We'll oh. all be short of time. But that's right. Fit all the fun stuff in. But then comes January. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no. That's right. Sorry. And then, no. worse, February. Well, then you'll have jigsaw puzzles to work on. That's, that's right. right. Okay. All right. We'll find something. All right, guys. We'll we speak, always do. We'll speak to you guys next week. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take care. Uh, that is uh, this week in the Lakeville Journal uh, here on Robin Hood Radio. Find the Lakeville Journal at tricornernews.com.